Well, good morning. This is the Your Home Soul Guaranteed Radio Show. I'm Dave McKay, Wally Kerr. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How, How are, are you? you doing? I'm great this week. Thank you. Um, I, I needed extra coffee to get going this morning. I think you said you did, too. 7 a.m. hit pretty hard. Yeah, listen, I almost didn't make the show today, but, but I'm, I'm good to go. I've had two coffees, and now I'm, now I'm ready to go. Okay, so today's going to be a fun day because I think I know a little bit of what we're going to talk about. But tell me uh, what's on the agenda for today's show. Yeah, we got some big news today. Big news. Thing, something that happened this week, and some of you may know and some of you don't. So we'll talk about that big news today. We've got a good question from a caller this week okay. that we'll listen in to. Um, and here to talk about that big news, we're going to have Chris Doak who is one of our preferred lenders with Gateway Mortgage. Yes. He's going to be in to talk a little bit about this news, so that's almost a teaser for what we're going to oh, talk okay. about today. Okay, But you'll like the news, so listen in today. And then uh, and then we'll talk a segment I wrote today, Dave, for our show called, What's Up in This Market? You know, why are some homes selling while other homes are sitting? Okay. So we'll, we'll talk about that That'd today. That'd be interesting. Got a couple of open houses. In fact, I'm going to be in the field this weekend if you... If you'd like to meet me and um, and see that I really do have a face for radio, that's why I'm not on TV. You get out and meet me at Open House this weekend, uh, along with a couple of other open houses. So looking forward to the show today, Dave. Fantastic. We'll be back right after this. Well, Wally, you said we had some big news this week, and this is pretty exciting. This is this is uh, this is big news. Big big news. Yes. I'm going to put two bigs in there. Okay. Okay. It's biggie big. Okay. So uh, so Dave, this week the Fed's actions. May have, for the first time, you and I, man, we've been talking about the Fed for six months since yes. we started doing this show, yes. questioning their actions. You know, why are they going to raise rates again? Of course, they've been trying to beat inflation. This was the first sign this week, and, and some of you may have heard and some of you have not, that, that, uh, that the Consumer Price Index on Wednesday was announced that consumer prices on, you know, these are goods and commodities and the things that you and I pay yes, for, yes. had only gone up 0.2% in June. So take 0.2 and multiply that times 12 for 12 months in a year. Okay. That's annualized kind of inflation at 2.4%. And the Fed's been trying to reach 2%. So it was such good news that interest rates fell immediately. Oh, wow. Okay. Dave, our lenders on Tuesday, we're going to have Chris Doak in here real shortly. Yes. And get him to talk about this a little bit, because the question is, when, when rates fall a half a point in one day, that's generally what we saw, is rates were around 7%, and boom, this consumer price index data comes out from the government. The indicator says that prices barely went up in the month of June, which tells the Fed and the consumers and the investors the, and, and everybody, that maybe what the Fed's been doing has been good. Maybe they finally got a strap here and got inflation under control. Okay. You know, rope, roped that cow and, <laughs> yes. and, and got her pulled in here. Yes. Okay? So, um, so interest rates fell this week. Could be a really, really big turning point. It's kind of interesting, Dave. One of the things we'll talk about today is you and I have talked all the time about the market being busiest this time of year. People wanting to move in June. Yes. Well, we're at we're at July fifteenth. Yes. We're halfway through July, and you and I have talked about the fact that people want to make a decision and get the kids embedded into a new school district. Yes. Right. Kind of hard to be the new kid on the block. You know, when you move, hard yeah. to be the new kid at school. Right. You remember those days. So will right? this will this facilitate that? Will this push people over the edge? You think? Now, I think that's what the big question becomes. Now, okay. Is this is not a huge drop? Okay, we're not back in the fives again. Sure. But we're back in the mid sixes, and it looked like we were going the other direction. So, uh, the availability of homes it's been rising. The inventory has been going up. Yes. What's this going to do? Is this going to reverse that? Is this going to extend our selling season this year? We're going to talk more about that with Chris Doak here shortly, but this could be one of the game changers that we've been waiting for, and that is good news from the Fed, and we got that this week. That's great, and then like you mentioned, uh, Chris will have a great perspective on this being from a mortgage company. So I think it'll be really interesting when he gets in, in here this morning. Uh, Chris, I hope you're on your way if you're listening this morning. <laughs> um, as soon as he gets in here to, uh, to to tell us if he thinks they could go down more, if he just thinks oh, this wow. is temporary. Okay. So let's get his insight from uh, from a mortgage company, Gateway Mortgage, that actually Governor Stitt started Gateway Mortgage. You probably know that, Dave. That was what 
governors. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's his business. Yes, okay. They're in 43 states now, so I think they've got pretty good insight about what the market will do. We'll see what he says today. Fantastic. All right. Now, this is a great segment where uh, you could be listening to our show now. You could decide to call in. You can call in during the week. And it's a recorded line, so you don't have to worry about being live on the right, air. Right. You call in, record your question for Wally, and he can answer it on the air. And all you have to do is call, here's the number, 1-844-211-3817. 1-844-211-3817. When you get the prompt, you're going to want to uh, punch in one two three four. Record your question. We can uh, talk about it on the air. And Wally, we have, uh, we have one this morning. We do. Let's listen in. Hi, Wally. This is Ed. Hey, we're looking at doing some remodeling in our home and would like to know what are the best options for borrowing money for home improvement appreciation? I enjoy the show. Thank you. Okay. Wow. What a great question by Ed. So, um, so you know, what are the best options for, for borrowing money for home improvements? So let's talk about a couple of different things here. What's called a HELOC and what's you know, you know what a second mortgage is, of yes, course. Yes. So let's look at how a HELOC differs from a, differs from a second mortgage. If that's a foreign term to you, a HELOC is, that's an acronym. It's H-E-L-O-C. And that acronym, Dave, is the Home Equity Line of Credit. And, uh, you know, you get a line of credit, and it just it's exactly what it says, right? Sure. Now, uh, I've, I've heard of this, but I, I didn't know how it was applied exactly what the definition behind it was. I knew what it was, so I'm going to learn something here. Okay, so so basically what you're doing in either one of these cases with a HELOC or a second mortgage is you're borrowing against the equity in your home. Okay, okay. so if you just bought your home six months ago and you paid 220 and it appraised for 220 you probably don't have equity to borrow against. Sure. So that's Absolutely. the first thing to, to point out here is you need some equity in your home. A home equity line of credit allows you to draw the money out as you need it. Okay. And, and it's typically going to be a smaller amount of money. So let's look at some of the differences here. A second mortgage, Dave, is, is a one-time deal. You go in, you apply. It's probably a little bit harder to qualify for a second mortgage. Okay. Because you're going in and you're going to get a lump, a lump sum of money. You could do a second mortgage to, to remodel your home. Maybe you want to take that European vacation yes. and go over with Chevy Chase and see if he's still <laughs> okay. hanging out, right? <laughs> um, you know, you're going to go borrow a lump sum of money, and you've probably decided what you're going to do with that money. Sure. Maybe it is, again, for a big vacation. Maybe you're going to go borrow $30,000, okay? With a second mortgage, you're going to have a, a monthly payment, just like a house payment would be. Sure. Okay? And, uh, and then there's probably going to be a fixed interest rate. Okay. Okay. But but a but a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, is a line of credit, and because you don't know when you're going to borrow that money, you could go get that line of credit and go borrow six thousand dollars, and maybe you do some home remodel. Okay. And then maybe you're happy for a while. Okay. Sure. Uh, let Let's go back and uh, equate this to my wife Cindy. Yeah, she's she's happy. She goes and does it, and about two weeks later, she's like, "Okay, honey, let's go do something else to the house." Oh okay? no. So with a HELOC. You don't have to specify when you're going to borrow the money. It's just a line of credit. Okay. You go borrow that, maybe you pay it back. Now you go borrow some more, you pay it back. Or maybe you borrow some and then you want to borrow some Does more. Does the interest rate change on that? Okay, there's the... And the, is it is the interest rate applied to if I borrow $10,000 and at the time there was a certain interest rate, uh, is that locked in? Or when I borrow the next $10,000 three years later... Is that all lumped together and whatever the interest rate, is, like almost like a credit card? Yeah, kind of yeah. Thing, you, see, you're, you've hit it on the head. This is what Ed wants to know, and so, so Ed, the answer to your question is a HELOC is typically going to be an interest rate that varies. So okay. your payment's going to vary based on what you owe. So if you borrow six thousand and the rate is six, there's your payment. Sure. And and then you keep paying on that, but maybe you want to go borrow some more, and so you add another four thousand to that line of credit. Now it's going to be figured at the new interest rates. So you're going to have a changing sure. interest rate and a changing payment. That's the difference, Dave, on a second mortgage again. Typically a lump sum. That payoff period is typically 5 to 10 years, maybe 15 years on a second mortgage. Okay. It's not going to be a 30-year deal. Sure. So your payments are going to be figured probably over 10 or 15 years. But it's going to be a fixed rate. You're going to lock in the rate today, and that's going to be your fixed rate. Okay. So, um, and again, on the HELOC. Now, home equity lines of credit, typically a 15 to 20 year payback maximum. 
And again, that interest rate's going to change. So really good question uh, from Ed uh, on the difference between HELOCs and second mortgages. HELOC, typically a smaller amount of money and, and a variable interest rate, whereas second mortgage is typically a larger lump sum, could be a little bit harder to qualify for, okay. and you're going to have a fixed interest rate and a fixed payment. So I think, uh, I'm just thinking about myself, I'm thinking I like that line of credit because I don't want all this lump sum of cash that's, uh, it's going to be too easy for me to go spend. I'm just going to pull out what I need to go build that pergola or to put the pool in the backyard and not draw more money. You know, I'm exa I'm really glad you said that because as you as you research second mortgages, normally they're for a specific purpose. You're actually going in just like you said, I'm going to add a pool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get me an estimate. The pool is going to cost me 80 grand to put in. I'm going to go borrow 80 to do the pool so that you're borrowing it for that specific purpose and you don't just draw against that. Uh, like you say, with a line of credit, that can be a little dangerous. Sure, absolutely. Hey, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Chris Doak is here, and we're going to talk about the big news this week with the feds, the interest rates, and what does that mean for your home loans with Chris Doak next. Well, Chris Doak is back to join us again this morning from Gateway Mortgage. And Chris, it's kind of a good news, bad news. The good news is what we heard from the feds this week. The bad news is you know we're going to call you and get you up early on a Saturday morning <laughs> yeah. to bring you in to talk about it. Well, so we're it. glad to have you here. First of all, Thanks, good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Dave. How, good morning, was, the, how was the traffic coming uh, up this morning? It, it, it was, was, okay, it was it? easy. It was easy. I love it. It was, it was great. Great. It usually is pretty light at uh, about 6.45 as I'm rolling in. Well, here Saturday, Saturday mornings morning. are so easy anyway. Yes, right. That's right. Absolutely. Well, okay, Chris. Uh, we heard the news from Wally. I guess uh, for someone who needs to take out a mortgage to buy a home, the news probably couldn't have been much better this week, could yeah. it? Yeah, it was a great it was a great week, great rebound from the last couple of weeks for sure. So good news that inflation is uh, potentially curbed at a, at a at a good rate, and so the the rates responded to that. Yeah, so. tell everybody a little bit more. I, I mentioned this morning. Consumer price index yeah. was really low in June. Yeah. It looked like commodities and the prices of things. They really kind of got it under control. And, and why is that good news for the mortgage market? Chris? Yeah, what, what that means is that they do believe that that's curbed inflation. And so potentially, uh, you know, the Fed was speculating that they're going to have to raise the rate maybe two more times this year. It looks like maybe that report curbed it to be one, just one. So we may see a, a rise in the Fed rate in July, but hopefully that will be the only one for the rest of the year. And, okay. and rates responded positively because of that. What's the... Uh When's the last time that you've had uh, the rates? I, I guess they've gone from about a seven to a six and a half. Yeah. When's the last time have they they've dropped that that much before? Yeah, really, honestly, Dave, at yeah. the beginning of the year, we had a really really good run okay. with the rates dropping. They did it. They did a great job, and all of a sudden, we were locking people in the high fives, and you thought, okay, here we go, we're in good shape. And then uh, first of February came, and and it's been a roller coaster since then. Sure. Okay. So I would think, and I, I love when I learned about float down options. Yes. This seems like someone that has the float down option, uh, maybe they set that up with you last week or with yeah. their mortgage company, and now all of a sudden uh, it, it went down half a point. Uh, it, that's correct, right? It goes down half a yep. point from yep. like a seven to six and a half. Yeah. Um, so it, do they want to wait to see if it's going to go down a little bit more? Or is this a great opportunity yeah. for someone to go lock it in? Yeah, yeah that's, great, that's my big question great, this week, too. Great question. I mean, I, I do think um, I think it depends on when they're closing. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so if we have someone with a float down option that, that's closing 60, 90 days, they may wait for just a little bit and see if they get a little bit better. And then as soon as we maybe start to see those things uh, head up just a hair, we may lock it in right right then so it depends on when they close but but absolutely it'd be something we want to take a look at okay so you're you're talking about 60 to 90 days i was yeah. going to ask a uh, short term yeah what do you think the chances are the rates going even lower yeah I, I do think that short term this is this is this report's helped a bunch and i do think we'll see short term then come down a little bit uh long term i think i think what they still want to see like usually when the job markets are so positive because the job market reports have been real positive really strong right when okay. the, i think when those start to go down is really when we're going to see them really go down okay so i, I think short term yes but i think once once those job markets you start to see that neg negatively occur which we don't we don't really want that right we want people to have jobs sure uh, but the rates do do, do uh, i think that's when you'll see them 
decrease quite a bit. Okay, so let's let's take it down to the consumer. Yeah. Just somebody listening to the show that says, man, I, I don't really care about all this information for the economy. It's great. What do I need to be doing right now? First thing we need to tell listeners, Dave, is yeah. to remind people when they start to hear us talking about rates, those yeah. those fluctuate daily. Yeah. We can talk about maybe they were seven, yeah. maybe now they're six yeah. and a half. Help us understand that a little bit. I know that yeah. that the rates got better. Yeah. A lot of this has to do with credit score. Yeah. And how much somebody's going to borrow. So help yeah. us with that. Yeah, bit. credit score, loan to value, what loan program. I think the other important piece is, Wally, is that they, they also need to know that if rate is the big obstacle or payment, rate that affects payment, is the big obstacle, that there are options for that as, as well. We talked about that a little bit on Monday with the temporary rate buy-down where they can add, they can see their rate decrease 3% for year one, 2% for year two. So they can oh, get wow. some relief short term until it's time to refinance it when the rates really do come down. Yeah, those buy downs, so, it, so it's neat. It, it, it's real simple. So today, if rates were six and a half right. and someone said, hey, the rates are still yeah. too much for me, you, know, you can get a seller potentially yes. in this market yes. to, to pay some closing costs. Yeah. You take those closing costs, you stick those in an escrow account, yeah. The buyer's payment can start basically down at a four and a half, a five yeah. and a half percent interest rate. Yeah. That money comes out of the escrow account and subsidizes their payment. That's right. So the, the buyer gets some pain relief there for one, one year, two, two years, years, three, three years. years. We all hope that next year we're going to make more money. That's right. right. That's and right. That a house payment's going to be more affordable. Kind of yeah. lets you slip in yep. and ease into a payment that's more comfortable yeah. if the seller will pay some closing that's costs. That's right. Now, Dave, you know, you and I have been talking about how inventory's been going up, yes, right? Yes. And so when inventory goes up and, and home sellers, you know, showings slow down and the sellers say, wait a minute, I really need to sell this home. Wally, what do I need to do? And in some cases, instead of a seller reducing their price, maybe five or $10,000, yeah. As you and I talked a few yeah. days ago, Chris, it's more effective to say, yeah. I'm going to take that, that five or 10000 that I would reduce yeah. and instead tell a buyer that I'll buy their interest rate down. Yeah. So again, make it as simple as possible. If rates are six and a half or right. six and three quarters right. or whatever it is, right. you know, a two one buy down yeah. starts their payment like it's a four point Five, four point seven five. Yeah, right. That's right. And then in the next year, it's like their payments yeah. five point seven five, which we'd all take right now, right? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's right. pretty exciting. But but yeah. the seller can pay that, mm -hmm. and and the mortgage company holds that money, right. And subsidizes the buyer's payment, yeah. to where that payment is a little less painful. And, and then they they can refinance it if the rates come down to five percent or four seven five or whatever. They can refinance it during the middle of that temporary buy down. And, and still recoup the money in the escrow and it pays go, goes towards paying down their balance. I think the key to what you said though, Wally, is this, is that I don't know that the five or $10,000 price reduction solves the problem. What solves the problem for the seller to get more buyers is to help them get their payment down. Yeah, 100%. So Dave, yeah. if, let's say a home is 350 today. Okay. Let's say you and Kim are shopping for a home. Okay. I'm showing you homes and, and I call you up and I say, hey, uh, hey Dave, guess what? This home over here priced at $350,000. Wow, they just reduced it to $340,000. And you think, uh, hey, Wally, that's not such a big deal to me and Kim. Three fifty dollars to three forty, dollars that's not very exciting. What if I called you instead and said, hey, Dave, I found a way to get you this $350,000 home where your payment was going to be $2,000 a month, but for the first year, we can get that down to... 1600 and for the oh, second year we can get it to 1800 and it's not going to be a $2,000 payment until year three and you think well that's kind of intriguing that yeah. makes it a little easier for us I think my wife's going to get a raise later this year uh, I'm going to get a Christmas bonus from my company and so uh, yeah I like that idea so like you said Chris it makes a lot more sense for maybe a seller where maybe a five or ten thousand dollar reduction isn't going to be the game changer. That's right. But helping that buyer, we sellers need to understand they have to help buyers. They do. And, and if you can get on the same page yeah. and say, Mr. Buyer, I'll help you. Yeah. And the buyer says, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give you your listed price if you'll help me do that. That's right. Put those two people together on I paper. like the idea of having an extra $400 a month when I'm moving into a new home. I've already budgeted 
two thousand dollars a month but now if i have that extra cash there's always little things you want to do oh we need to go out and buy this or i want to do this now in the backyard or whatever well now i can do that for the next year and a half because i have that money that was already budgeted for the house anyway that's cool yeah and i I think the importance of it is well i know we run into certain price points that may have some multiple offers but not every price point does and most probably don't Right? Is that right. is that accurate? Well, it's it's under about three hundred thousand. We've yes. got some numbers I that I'll share late in our yeah. show today that are, that are pretty amazing about how quickly homes are selling under three hundred thousand oh, dollars. Okay, but you're right, Chris. You go yeah. about three hundred, you get yeah. three fifty, four hundred, four, five, six hundred thousand. Some of those homes have been slower while the interest rates went up. And that's when I, I did some numbers yesterday on a temp buy down, the temporary buy down on a three hundred twenty five thousand dollar loan, and you're talking. Uh, year one, their 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 payment was going to uh, be better by like six hundred and seventy dollars a month. You start getting oh, wow. into those large loan amounts, and and that's really where you need it. So in those larger loan amounts, I think. Okay, so. Chris, I have this question for you. If we hear uh, four to five weeks from now that mm-hmm. the Feds do something similar like they did this week, sure, and we have another little bump down, mm-hmm. and we kind of maintain this. Six and a quarter or six and a half. Yeah. Let's just hope it's at six and a quarter yeah. for maybe two months or so. Sure. Does that add to the idea of stability in the future that the roller coaster maybe starts to slow down? Can you forecast? Yeah. Is think, that something you can do it in, yeah. in in mortgage? Well, if or we, not, if we if 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 Wally and I could forecast um, like that, we would be doing something else. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But, but here here here's what I would say to that is that. If we can sustain potentially the last Fed rate hike of the year uh, and keep rates in the low sixes, I think that does bode well for where we head into the the last half of the year. And I was thinking the less uh, less the chance that we get two or three months down the road and all of a sudden the Feds one week just go boom and and jack them up half a point, three quarters of a point because of whatever. I, I, John Q, just don't know anything. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would think that there's less opportunity for that to happen if there's more stability. That the longer we can kind of yeah. keep it there. I agree. I okay. think it's got to be some indication with the consumer price index showing such a small increase in June. Agreed. I think that's an indication we're headed in the right direction. And you know, it's been hard for me to swallow. And, and again, Dave and I joked before you got here mm-hmm. about the Fed's increases and kind of bashing the Fed in here every week on our show. <laughs> right. But it kind of indicates with this data, in summary, that they might have done what they needed to do, and we might be headed in the right direction. Yeah, Would you agree? I, I do agree. I think they probably, I will say this, I think they started too late, and, and, and in the beginning it, it was too much. Okay, so that we probably could have started earlier, and it could have been more of an ease into how, many, how much... So okay. I, I, that would be my only my only take on that. So okay, so now someone is excited because of the rates have dropped down, right? And uh, they were just about ready to pull the trigger, and this has pushed them over the edge. Yeah. Uh, how can we get in contact with you? What's the yeah. easiest way yeah. to call Chris Doak so we can lock in that that rate yeah, today? Yeah, absolutely. Four zero five two five three two two seven six. Or just go to chrisdokemortgage.com and it has all my information. Chrisdokemortgage.com. Yeah. And tell us about your weekend warriors. I see. I work weekend the warriors. weekends, right? Yeah. Because uh, this is not yeah. a Monday through Friday job in real <laughs> no, estate. Right. By the way, I'm here seven days a week. If if I can help you in yeah. buying or selling, uh, you know, I'd like you to give me a call anytime three three zero three thousand. But I love the fact that you're like us, Chris. Yeah. You have what you call weekend warriors, yeah. which makes it easy for people who are working during the week yeah. to reach your team. To, to get a rate quote, That's right. to get a pre-approval letter. That's right. uh, so tell us about your weekend warriors. Yeah, absolutely. We have someone almost every weekend from 12 to 4 on Saturdays, 12 to 4 on Sundays right. that are available for that and uh, and want to make sure to come alongside consumers and, and help with their timely needs when they're trying to make some decisions on the weekend. Well, I so. might be worried that someone else is going to move in on that house. And if I have to wait close yeah. to 48 hours, the clock is ticking. I'm at home yeah. on a Saturday night thinking, I hope that ha- we found that house today that we want, and, and that's great. They can just give you a call, 405-253-2276. Chris, thank you so much for, uh, right. again, us dragging you in on this no Saturday way. morning. Great it was to good be with news. y'all. Thank you, guys. Great. Thanks, Chris. Have a good one. Always great to hear from Chris Doak. Uh, some wonderful knowledge, especially as it relates to uh, interest rates 
and what the Fed announced this week. That's really cool. Yeah, you know, uh, Dave, he's been in it 14, 15 years. He's a branch manager, but he runs a team like mine. So we have we have people in our inside sales department who take calls all the time. We have people in marketing. I have listings coordinator, closing coordinators. I've got a database manager. We call our past customers. So we've got a big team. He runs his business like, like we do. Instead of Chris working as an individual mortgage agent, he's got eight other people on his team. So you know, he's got someone that takes calls, someone that does the follow-ups. He's got underwriters. He's got processors. And so um, I like the efficiency of his team. His interest rates are really great. Yes. He, did, he didn't sell that while he was in here, but his communication is stellar. His rates are great. His service is really good, and he can do quick closings. So you're right. It's always good to have Chris here. All right. So we talked mortgage rates. Now let's talk the actual market with houses. And um, I guess I'm... I, I kind of hear mixed signals when we kind of discuss uh, some homes that are still getting multiple offers. Great for those sellers, they're getting multiple offers, but then I hear the inventory is going up, so then some homes are going to take longer to sell. So um, for some people that could be a little confusing because they're thinking like, hey, this is great, multiple offers. My friend got multiple offers. I'm going to sell my house and it's going to sell uh, in the Wally approved 17 day window, uh, which is your <laughs> That's average. It. Of That's course. what we did in 2022. So they might be a little confused if they put their house on the market and it takes a little while. So explain why that could be and what's going on with this market. Yeah, so, so you hit the nail on the head and I understand it has become confusing. And I think the reason it's become confusing is the rates did go up so fast, but then on the other hand, you hear that there's not enough inventory to satisfy current demand. So, um, you know, the truth is, first of all, Dave, it's summer. People want to buy right now, yes. and, and some homes just need a catalyst to make that happen. Okay. So, go we, ahead. We just talked to Chris Doak about those rates coming down that could push people. So, do you think the drop in rates? right now is enough to, to be that catalyst you mentioned. You know, so so we just talked about it being maybe midweek it was seven and, and then maybe, you know, it was more like six and a half here later in the week. And so um, here's here's what I think is is easiest for people to understand is let's say you're gonna go buy a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar home. You're probably not a first time buyer. Sure. So people need to sell their current home to go buy another one. Dave, that's been where it got slow is the people that wanted to buy 450, 550, 650, 850 a million. Okay. They have a home, they're in a current rate of 3 or 4% maybe on their current home, sure. and they've just not been real excited about giving up that rate yes. and moving up to a 6.5 or a 7. Yes. So does that change that part of the market dramatically? Maybe not, but the buy-down programs could. So let me... Let me give you a little insight there just based on what okay. Chris said. Okay. Let's say you want to go buy a home and you're thinking, okay, I see the rates coming down. Maybe I'll go lock with a lender like Chris and I'll get a float down option and, I, and I'll do a 60-day lock. And maybe if the rates come down, maybe I do get advantage of that. Maybe they go to six and a quarter, sure. like you said. And so they think, here's what I could do. I can go to that person that owns that home that's $800,000, ask them to do a buy down, so if rates are six and a quarter, six, let's just say six and a half, I can get my payment to start at four and a half, and then after a year go to five and a half, and really, and then go to six and a half fixed after three years. That makes it easier for me to slide into that bigger home, sell my home right now, not have the shock of moving from a four percent interest rate on my current home. Now I'm going to go to the new one, but I did a buy down. So I'm really now getting in at four and a half for a year. Yes. Then it's going to go to five and a half after that. For and that's a year. saving a lot of money on a home that is five fifty or something. Well, right? that's right. And here's the kicker, Dave: okay. is so at any time you can refinance, right? So Chris mentioned there. Let's say you do a three two one buy down. You get that interest rate to start. Maybe it slides up after that first year. That second year it slides up a little bit more, but then rates drop. So now you go back and get out of that arm. That, or that, pardon me, that, that, that buy down with that rate and you go into a fixed rate. And so, um, so I think this is going to help some people looking to buy larger homes who currently own a home if they'll combine the lower rate, knowing that housing values are predicted to go up next year again yes. because inventory is really low. I, I just definitely think it's the best news that the market's had in a while. I think there's great options for 
an owner that owns a home right now, like you do, Dave, say you and, and Kiln were going to move this next year, and you're like, you know, we really need these extra rooms. We're now going to, to raise, you know, a child that we've adopted. Um, you know, we're going to have our son move back in with us. We need more space. He needs a suite. I think there's good options for combining now this lower rate, being able to sell your home because the inventory is really super low right now. Still across most price ranges, the yes. inventory is low. So I think it's it's great for consumers, and um, and because um, I know a lot of people are tired of just seeing prices go up and up and up. Okay, so the inventory low, it's going to make those prices go up. Um, the mortgage rates being a little lower will help out with that, but it's it's kind of like we've become accustomed to the prices going up. Yeah, yeah. Our, everybody's kind of tired of that, right? I mean, prices have just been continuing for, for consumer commodities sure. to continue to go up. It's like, where is this going to end? How much more is everything going to cost me to live because I can't afford that and a sure. bigger house? So I think this is good news. And like you said, prices just have continued to go up and up. Now it looks like there might actually be some relief you know, in sight. But it is maybe the great combination because if I'm a seller... Uh, I just heard you say that people don't want those home prices to go up. Sure, I do. I want multiple offers. Get, keep it going. Let's go. Let's yeah, move it so, up. So but we, with the with the the combination of a buy down option and different programs that mm -hmm. I know Chris has told us before, um, and uh, the interest rates coming down, it makes it easier for people to afford these homes. Plus, it makes it. Uh, it makes it the, the validity of me selling for higher uh, that much truer. You're right. And, and I think sense? we want to specify that when we said prices coming down, that's just commodities. That's just your groceries, and yes. whether it's yes. gasoline and all the things that we're buying at the store and in life. But you're right. Home prices are continuing to escalate. And everything that you read on the Internet and research says with an inventory this low of available homes, uh, and then less people selling later this year. Boy, 2024 looks like a really good year for housing. Um, you know, to kind of give you an idea, really, home values have only fallen from in the peak of last year, maybe one and a half to two and a half percent. But boy, it looks like 2024 is going to take off and run again. So I think the Fed, what they've been trying to do is tame interest rate or tame inflation. So you know, until our buying slows down, which it hadn't. Companies were just continuing to push prices up and up and up. So, um, and then wages have grown fast locally. It's caused a lot of businesses in Oklahoma to have to increase their prices. I certainly don't blame them, but this is good news with this consumer price index this last week. And so, week. some homes are just selling faster and getting more offers. We and, and again, some will sit there, but some are getting more offers. How would you address that? And how do you think changes with the good news about interest rates? this week changes that as well. Okay, so I think it's easy to say that people's perceptions are their reality. So if the stock market, like the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, just repeatedly have losing sessions over and over, that's kind of depressing <laughs> week after week, and, and it affects my feelings, you know, about what I'm going to spend. So, obviously, you like good news, and that's yeah, what we had this week. Yeah, sure. I, you know, I think that helps homeowners who, who own that more expensive home right now you know, the good news motivates buyers when they see things headed in the right direction. I mean, rates aren't five and a half yet, and maybe they won't be for a while, but the Fed's taking the right action. It's good news. The lesser expensive homes, say below 300, man, they may get even hotter than they are right now, Dave, and, and that's hard to believe. But I firmly believe that this is going to lead to increases in sales prices, especially for those homes under 300. And um, I think the homes that have been sitting may see a turnaround. Now. Okay, so that's that sounds all well and good, but let's remember the time of the year that we're in. It's the middle of July. So yeah. you take out the time of the time of the year, this sounds great. It sounds like um, I'm going to be able to get more for my home. Uh, if I'm looking to buy, the rates are coming down. That's all fantastic. Now we throw in there that it's the middle of July and school's starting in less than a month. So when you factor that in, what is it, what does that mean? Boy, I'm glad. I mean, what a great question because because I don't know that, and I don't want to get too excited about just a simple half, approximately half a percent decrease in rates. Um, let's look at recent history, Dave. When rates were three and four percent, the market was nuts year round. 
It didn't yeah, matter. You said like November. It didn't matter. Absolutely. Were in February, January. Okay. So, so are we likely to see that? So recent research says the market will be flooded with buyers when rates reach about 5.5% again. That would blow out the inventory of homes that are available today in the market. So we're moving back a couple of years like, like it was maybe about two years ago. You know, I don't know that it'll get that crazy again, but buyers have been very vocal about what they want. We still, again, have a historically low number of homes for sale because many homeowners just love that low rate. Six and a half percent rates aren't going to put them over the top as far as sales, but I think it bears watching. And uh, again, do me a favor. I really enjoy doing this show. At the end of the day, remember, I am in real estate. I'd love to help your family make these decisions, get you into a home that would be comfortable for you and, and, and where the payment works. And, uh, and, and that's what I'm here for. And I've mentioned this before. Um, you know, we do the show together, but you've helped me. You've helped my brother, uh, the rest of family members as well, buy and sell homes. So not only are we uh, friends doing the show together, um, I, I, I'm, you're my realtor as well. Thanks, so Dave. I would, you know, that if I can kind of uh, uh, tell everyone out there if there's someone I trust, um, it, it's easy to say why we're doing this show, like, oh, yeah, uh, give Wally a call. But, no, I use you, and you've helped out family members. So I'm, I'm, I'm humbled, yeah. and, and I appreciate the business that you brought to me. I, I love doing this. I love helping people. That is the goal. And, uh, and if I can help you and your family or, or a friend, uh, I'd love to help them. And always the funnest thing to do is you don't even have to call Wally. You can text them at 330-3000. 405-330-3000. All you do is text the address of your home and on a scale of 1 to 10, the condition of it. If it's about a, a 7, you just put in a new pool, then maybe you think it's an 8, an 8.5. And, and then Wally, maybe later on that day, will text back going, this is the general ballpark figure of what right. we give think you a your range home is worth. Yeah. And, uh, and give you as accurate an estimate as I can based on recent sales. We love doing that. You don't have to talk to me, so shoot me a text. I think that is so cool. Okay, this is an exciting segment because I love hearing about homes of the week. And it, they, you paint a picture of these beautiful homes, whether they have a, a pool that I can sit out in the pool, overlook the pond, which overlooks the 10th tee box at X Golf Course. Um, now, I know that's not every house. And then Margaritaville is right behind that, yes, right? You absolutely. just go sit, hang out with Jimmy Buffett. Yes. It's the summertime and... Uh, Crank out and they're not all machine. that way, but you have some homes that are the, the pictures that you paint, and when you go online and look at them, they are fantastic. So this is this is uh, homes of the week, listings of the week, and our open houses. Tell us what we have to look forward to this weekend. Well, let's go talk about one of those with a pool with a great backyard. So okay. this is open Sunday for only an hour, one to two p.m. It's okay. in Norman. It's in West Norman. It's seven hundred Trisha Lane. And this uh, property is six hundred thousand dollars. Gorgeous pool. I mean, gorgeous. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a there's a pergola back there, Dave, and a covered patio, and party tiki lights. And, and oh. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jimmy Buffett show up for okay. this open house. I think he'd be really excited about nice this little home. luau. Feel uh, to it, it. It's great for relaxing and for summer fun with the family. This is a great property. Uh, almost thirty five hundred feet, five bedrooms, four. Full baths, extensive wood flooring, and a beautiful kitchen. Uh, take a look at the pictures online if you're near a computer now. 700 Trisha Lane. Go meet Patrick Moore on my team. He'll be there from 1 to 2 on Sunday. And Are you going to uh, get a call from him uh, that day when I show up with my swim trunks and ready to jump in that pool? He's going to say, Wally, some guy just showed up. We'll have a Sandy sign on knows the, you. We'll have but... a sign on the front door with some Speedo trunks and a and a line through the middle of it. No Speedos this <laughs> weekend at that. that open house. <laughs> Fantastic. So, <laughs> uh, and then come meet me this weekend. I'd love to see you in South Norman on a golf course at 1200 Southern Hills Circle. This home is over 5,200 feet. It's on two acres. It's a golf course lot. Kind of interesting. On this golf course, Dave... You mow an acre of it, and the golf course maintains about the other acre. Oh, okay. Kind of cool. Nice. So you got two acres, and the golf course takes care of about half of that. It's a golf course lot. It's got a beautiful view into the trees. It's got a pool. It's got a spa. It's a four- or five-bedroom easily. Either use the media room and the whole suite up there as a fifth bedroom or make it four-bed, and, and then use it as a media. Uh, Four-and-a-half baths. 
an amazing huge master bath with heated floors oh, on the inside. Nice, okay? nice. Radiant heated floors. Yes. That home's a million seventy-five thousand dollars. I'll be there Sunday from two to four. Okay. Be glad to greet any of our listeners. Okay. And then uh, you asked me about listings of the week. Right? Yes, yes. Okay? Uh, we always try to feature something we've got that's brand new, maybe that our listeners wouldn't have even noticed online. Okay. Uh, have you heard about the Deer Creek School District, Dave? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, pretty positive. Yes. Pretty, you know, pretty highly sought. My nephew went to school there. Did he? Had a very good experience. Yeah, so. great, great nice education, area. great yes. school district. So, 3940 Michael Road is a brand new listing in Edmond. Deer Creek Schools, Dave. Uh, four bed, three bath. It's on over an acre of land. It's over 2,500 square feet. You can build a shop building. Dave, you got that shop building built in your backyard yet? I'm working on that. Okay, all right. I'll get back to you next Which week on that. means I haven't started. All right. <laughs> shop buildings are okay. It's nicely updated. It's on a water well. Well, my wife would love that. Dave, my grass is so green during the summer because we're on a water well. Okay. My wife, of course, you haven't needed it this year, right? The, I've watered one day, basically. I've turned the sprinklers on one day. Yeah, I might That's have it. been maybe four or five days this year. It's an okay. amazing year for, yes. for rain, isn't yes. it, and all the moisture. But during the summer, even if it's dry, it looks like you could have painted my grass with a paintbrush. Nice. With green paint. Yes. Because we can water, you know, and use our water well, and all you're doing is paying for electricity. Mm -hmm. So this home's got a well. It's nicely updated. It's got an updated HVAC system, which is heat and air. They added a tankless water heater. It's got all new windows. It's got engineered wood floors. Nice. 3940 Michael Road, $410,000 in the Deer Creek School District. Check that one out online. That is a hot new listing in Deer Creek Schools. Okay, so with all of these and the news that we heard from the feds, uh, they probably need to give Chris Doak a call at Gateway Mortgage. Another little plug there for Chris. You're welcome, Chris. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, man, it's a great opportunity to go check out these homes, and uh, they can get into them just a little bit lower than they would have a week ago. And if you'd like to search any home available inside the marketplace, just go to our website called dreamhomesoklahoma.com. You could search every listing with every realtor, everything inside the Oklahoma City metro and even outside. It's a free search. DreamHomesOklahoma.com. Go find your dream home there and, and then let me know which ones you want to go see. Fantastic. We'll be back in just a few minutes to wrap up the show. We're back. we got a couple of minutes here before we're done for uh, this morning. Wally, um, you know, we are in the middle of July, um, and usually this is the time of the year where a lot of families and stuff are starting to slow down their search for homes. But uh, the news from the feds with interest rates uh, starting to lower um, what does that what does that show again for the market and uh, what do we think about with home sales maybe starting to stretch a little bit more through the summer yeah yeah such a great question to close our show with so uh, i just did some quick research uh yesterday dave and looked at a 20 mile radius around downtown oklahoma city over the last 30 days and there were over 800 newly reported sales and dave they were averaging only four days on the market over wow. the last 30 days four days on wow. the market uh, under 300000 between four and five days. So uh, first of all, if you're buying, these rates are probably going to maybe push a few buyers who were looking for that catalyst yes. that you mentioned earlier. Rates were around seven. Maybe they're down around six and a half. That's going to push buyers to want to buy quickly, even though we're in July and headed toward the end of school. Uh, remember, a lot of those people will be first-time buyers. Yes. Maybe they don't have kids yet. And they don't care as much about time as you sure. I think my advice would be, you know, don't try to go negotiate on the home you fall in love with. Uh, just, just go get it bought. The majority of the opinions, again, are that home prices are going to rise next year. So even if you just go pay listed price, say you're, say you're a friend of yours wants to go buy a home for two fifty. Man, sure. if you love that home and you're excited about it, and now you like the fact that rates dropped, just go get that two fifty home bought. It's probably going to go up next year. There's a chance that rates may be lower, and uh, and you could refinance in the future. But it looks like, Dave, there may just be a shortage of homes going into next year, which means home prices, which means home prices should go up. Why not get in and get one bought right now if you're serious about? Yes, buying? and you're going to gain in the equity. And I know the prices go up. But it's it's almost like just investments. You know that everything's starting to go up, and the the equity you're going to gain anyway. Right. And then when you turn that around. Um, Let's talk about sellers then. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so I, I don't know that there's urgency now 
and this is just straight from the heart. Okay. I don't know if there's urgency for home sellers, you know, that absolutely have to sell now, thinking that they're going to lose value on their home because it looks like the values will go up sure. next year. Um, home values again, we talked about a little earlier. They really haven't fallen more than maybe two to three percent from their highs in April of, of last year in 2022. So I speculate home values are going to increase by more than that in 2024. So if you wait to sell until next year, you know, have your home on the market by April or, or May when spring break is over and buying season starts, just like we saw this year, Dave. Mm -hmm. The inventory really begins to increase in June and July. That's what's happened again this year. Lots of homes coming on the market. Sales were beginning to lag. I think the interest rate change here may perk those sales up, even though we're late in July. I guess we can analyze that in our coming shows in the next couple of weeks. But the news was good. It may perk up the market, even though it's late in the summer. If you really don't want to sell your home now and it's not going to be until next year, no big deal. Um, maybe the rates will be better. Maybe your home value will be a little higher. And sure. maybe you'll call Wally and I'll help you sell that home for absolute top dollar and create great demand for I think it. we're going to be, uh, it's not going to be the wild, wild west. I like to say that. But uh, I think from what you're telling me, it's going to be really exciting April, May of next year because the people that are just holding on to it this year are going to be out there. The people wanting to buy it's going to be a buying, selling frenzy next year. Uh, a little bit it, more so than it was this year. More, there you go. More so I, than it was this here's year. Here's the deal. We got great news this week. Let's hope the economic news continues to be really good and very hopeful. I got two sets of fingers crossed here while we're talking on the air. Very hopeful that the Fed has done really what they need to do. And, and there still may be that little 25 basis point hike, apparently, mm -hmm. according to Chris Doak, that's expected in July. And even with that expected, rates dropped. So uh, I think it's uh, I think it's good news. Don't want to get too overexcited, but certainly optimism for the coming year. And I see for me, it's it's like it's I don't know if you want to call it an anomaly, but uh, it's both good now and it's good like you talk about in the future of next year in spring. You can you can sell now and everything's working itself out. Interest rates are low. Some people are Agreed. getting multiple offers. Or if you decide to wait, it looks like it's going to be good next year as well. So it, it seems to be good uh, whether you want to make that move now or you want to wait. Uh, e either or, you're going to be in a good position. Dave, you've gotten awful good at this, man, over the six months we've been doing our show. And I think I, I agree with everything you just said. Okay, so I need the uh, I need the Wally Kerr 330-3000 extension 2 if you want to reach Dave McKay. And I can give you... No, okay, don't... I'll get don't that do fixed that. this week. <laughs> no, it's just 330-3000. Text Wally, and he can get you on the road to uh, home selling prosperity. If you're ready to sell your house or you want to buy, give Wally a call today. Love to hear from you this week. Thanks, Dave. Enjoy doing the show with you again this week. Uh, see you next week, buddy. Absolutely.